Let's dive into Cal imperfect weak verbs. Now, before we dive in, make sure you understand Cal imperfect strong verbs first. It is foundational. And if you don't have a mastery of that paradigm, you will not be able to understand what's going on with weak verbs. So did you master it yet? You did. Good. Let's continue. Let's start with weak verbs that have a guttural in the second position. Look at bachar. With this second guttural weak verb, we will have our preformative, our prefix, and then instead of a holum stem vowel, we're going to have a retained pathak. Third masculine singular, yibchar. Third feminine singular, tibchar. Second masculine singular, tibchar. Second feminine singular, tibchari. Notice that the pathak here has shortened to hataf pathak. First common singular, evchar. Third masculine plural, yivcharu. Third feminine plural, tivcharna. Second masculine plural, tivcharu. Second feminine plural, tivcharna. First common plural, nivchar. So everywhere we have the suffix with a long vowel, it will be preceded by a shortened hatef pathak. So for example, we saw it in second feminine singular. We have the long hyric yod. It's preceded by hatef pathak. In the third masculine plural, we have a shirik, which is preceded by hatef pathak. And the same is true in second masculine plural, shirik preceded by hatef pathak. Now let's look at weak verbs with a third chet or third ayin. And for the most part, it keeps the stem vowel as a pathak. There's a few instances where it completely matches the normal strong conjugation. So look at shalach. Shalach means to send out, to go, to stretch out. Third masculine singular, yishlach. Third feminine singular, tishlach. Second masculine singular, tishlach. Second feminine singular, tishlachi. First common singular, eshlach. Third masculine plural, yishlachu. Third feminine plural, tishlachna. Second masculine plural, tishlachu. Second feminine plural, tishlachna. First common plural, nishlach. Now let's look at third olive. Now you might recall from the Cal Perfect, third olive uses a comet's stem vowel, and that will be retained in the imperfect, with a few exceptions. Third masculine singular, yimtsa. Third feminine singular, timtsa. Second masculine singular, timtsa. Second feminine singular, timtsa e. First common singular, emtsa. Third masculine plural, yimtsa u. Third feminine plural, timtsenna. Second masculine plural, timtsa u. Second feminine plural, timtsenna. First common plural, nimtsa. So for the most part, third olive in the Cal imperfect, it for the most part uses the comets, except in a few instances. It mirrors what we have in the Cal imperfect strong. And remember, when we're dealing with a third olive, sometimes we sometimes we can have changes due to compensatory lengthening, such as we have in the third feminine plural, second feminine plural, changing the comets to segel. It's not really expected for it to change to segel, but it does. So just be aware of it. It's not a big deal. You just know that there's oblaut because there's an olive. It happens. Next, let's talk about third hey weak verbs. Now the Cal perfect, it largely followed the third olive. It kind of does in the imperfect, but it's not using a double comets. Instead, the stem vowel will be segel. And sometimes it will be segel yod. 
So third masculine singular, givne. Third feminine singular, tivne. Second masculine singular, tivne. Second feminine singular, tivni. Notice here that the he is gone. First common singular, evne. Third masculine plural, yivnu. The he is gone. Third feminine plural, tivnena. Second masculine plural, tivnu. Second feminine plural, tivnena. First common plural, nivne. So as you saw, any of the imperfect conjugations that don't have a suffix bear the segol he ending. Wherever there is a suffix, well, the third he drops out. So you need to know your vocabulary in order to reconstruct or find, you gotta play the detective, what is the verbal root? What is the original lexical word? And so knowing your vocabulary is gonna be very important. You need to know. Now there is one special form, alternate form of third masculine singular. And with the third masculine singular, it drops the hey. It drops the hey and ends with the noon. Yven. We'll cover this more in a couple more videos. Let's move on to first gutturals. There's two kinds. Chazak, to be strong. Third masculine singular. Yechazak. Third feminine singular. Techazak. Second masculine singular. Techazak. Second feminine singular. Techazki. First common singular, echezak. Third masculine plural, yechezku. Third feminine plural, techezakna. Second masculine plural, techezku. Second feminine plural, techezakna. First common plural, nechezak. So not only do you see segol replacing hirik in the preformative, not only do you see a pathak as the stem vowel, you also see a hatef segol underneath the first guttural. Unless, of course, the path act changes to a shava, then the hatef segel simply becomes a segel. Now, in the second type of first guttural, instead of a segel under the prefix, you get a path act, and the stem vowel is a holum. So it looks very similar to cal perfect strong with some variation. The prefix vowel is a pathak instead of a hiric and also the vowel underneath the first guttural will be a hatef pathak unless it's followed by a shiva and there is one more exception to that and that's the first common singular which we'll cover in a moment third masculine singular ya'amod third feminine singular ta'amod second masculine singular ta'amod Second feminine singular, ta'amdi. First common singular. I'm going to say it slowly. E, e, mod. E, e, mod. Third masculine plural, ya'amdu. Third feminine plural, ta'amodna. Second masculine plural, ta'amdu. Second feminine plural, ta'amodna. First common plural, na'amod. Now, special note on first gutturals unique to Aleph. Now, first Aleph weak verbs will ordinarily follow uh, type one of the first gutturals, where it uses a pathak stem vowel and a segel underneath the prefix. There are a few exceptions. There are some first Aleph weak verbs that follow a different pattern. So be aware of these. You don't need to memorize them, but be aware. There are also some points of variation from the first gutturals we've seen before. So let's look at those and then we'll look at the additional type. When it comes to first Aleph gutturals, there are two types. You need to be aware of both. You don't necessarily need to memorize these, but be aware of them. The first type, let's look at Asar, to bind. Third masculine singular, yeesor. Third feminine singular, teesor. Second masculine singular, teesor. Second feminine singular, taasri. First common singular, eesor. 
third masculine plural. Ya'asru, third feminine plural. Te'esorna, second masculine plural. Ta'asru, second feminine plural. Te'esorna, first common plural. Ne'esor. So on this one, we have a segel in the prefix, but we have a holum throughout, except for when there should be a shava. When there's a shava, we have a double pathak. But there's another kind. Look at amar. This is to say, third masculine singular. Yomar, third feminine singular. Tomar, second masculine singular. Tomar, second feminine singular. Tomri, first common singular. Omar. Note that the aleph combined with the aleph. The first aleph is the aleph prefix. The second aleph is the first letter of the stem. And they combine. Third masculine plural. Yomru. Third feminine plural. Tomarna. Second masculine plural. Tomru. Second feminine plural. Tomarna. First common plural. Nomar. So on this kind, we have a holum instead of a hyric as our prefix vowel. And then we have a pathak stem vowel, except, of course, when it needs to become a pathak. Now let's look at geminate verbs. If you recall, geminate is when the second and third consonants of the verbal stem are identical. Be able to recognize these. You don't need to memorize them. There are actually two kinds or two patterns. Here's the first kind. Third masculine singular, yasov. Third feminine singular, tasov. Second masculine singular, tasov. Second feminine singular, tasobi. First common singular, asov. Third masculine plural, yasobu. Third feminine plural, tisubena. Second masculine plural, tasobu. Second feminine plural, tisubena. First common plural, nasov. Now compare those with these alternates. Again, this is still type one. Yasov, third masculine singular. Tisov, third feminine singular. Tisov, second masculine singular. Tisobi, second feminine singular. Yasov, first common singular. Yasobu, third masculine plural. Tisubena, third feminine plural. Tisobu, second masculine plural. Tisubena, second feminine plural. Nisov, first common plural. So that's the first type with its alternate form. We saw it with savav to go around, same word in both, just slightly different variations. Now let's look at a second type of geminate. This one with tamam, tamam meaning to be complete, third masculine singular, yatham, third feminine singular, tetham, second masculine singular, tetham, second feminine singular, Tethami, first common singular, etham, third masculine plural, ethamu, third feminine plural, tethamena, second masculine plural, tethamu, second feminine plural, tethamena, first common plural, netham. Realistically, when it comes to these geminates, you need to know your vocabulary. That's going to be really important and crucial because that's the only way you're really going to be able to tell what is the lexical word? Now let's talk about biconsonantal verbs. We mentioned in previous videos that when it comes to biconsonantals, their lexical form is based off of the infinitive construct. Now, another way of talking about biconsonantals is they are either uh, second yod or second vav. Why? because their lexical form, dependent on the infinitive construct, will either have a yod or a vav in the middle of that stem. Well, you can see it plain as day in the imperfect. We couldn't see it in the perfect. So let's take a look. Remember com, third masculine singular, which is actually the lexical form kum? Look at what the imperfect is, yakum. So here we see the medial or the, the middle letter, the vav. It's actually a shurik, but it's a vav. 
And this is an example of a Shirik class. Sometimes you can have a Vav with a Holom, a Holom Vav. Sometimes you can have a Vav, but it's actually a Shirik. Okay, so this is a Shirik example. Shirik class. There's also a Holom Vav class. Look at Bo to enter. The Cal perfect is Ba, but the imperfect, Yavo. And we also have a Hirik Yod class. You might recall Sam. Sam is actually Seem to place. And so the imperfect is Yasim. All of the biconsonantals, regardless of class, use comets in the prefix. Again, you don't need to memorize these. You should memorize the lexical forms of each of these special biconsonantal words. But really what we're talking about is recognition. You don't need to memorize any paradigms here. So looking at Shirik class, this would be a type of second Vav. Looking at Kum, third masculine singular, Yakum. Third feminine singular, Takum. Second masculine singular, Takum. Second feminine singular, Takumi. First common singular, Akum. Third masculine plural, Yakumu. Third feminine plural, Tukumena. Second masculine plural, Takumu. Second feminine plural, Tukumena. First common plural, Nakum. And our Holom Vav class from Bo, third masculine singular, Yavo. Third feminine singular, Tavo. Second masculine singular, Tavo. Second feminine singular, Tavoi. First common singular, Avo. Third masculine plural, Yavou. Third feminine plural, Tavona. Second masculine plural, Tavou. Second feminine plural, Tavona. First common plural, Navo. And then we have Seem, our second Yod. Third masculine singular, Yasim. Third feminine singular, Tasim. Second masculine singular, Tasim. Second feminine singular, Tasimi. First common singular, Asim. Third masculine plural, Yasimu. Third feminine plural, Tasimena. Second masculine plural, Tasimu. Second feminine plural, Tasimena. First common plural, Nasim. Now, you might recall from a few videos ago, we mentioned that weak verbs include verbal stems that begin with yod. So first yod. We didn't see any in the Cal perfect, did we? No. But they sure do occur in the Cal imperfect. So we need to go over them now. There's actually two types of first yod weak verbs. Let's go over both of those. And then we'll also cover halak, which follows the same pattern as the first yod. And we'll see that later. So first yod, the first pattern, the yod drops out and the prefix takes its place. And then we are left with a double sere. Third masculine singular, yeshev. Third feminine singular, teshev. Second masculine singular, teshev. Second feminine singular, teshvi. First common singular, eshev. Third masculine plural, yeshvu. Third feminine plural, teshavna. Second masculine plural, teshvu. Second feminine plural, teshavna. First common plural, neshev. So again, we're left with a double sere, and the initial yod from the stem drops out. The prefix takes its place. And of course, only when we're supposed to have a shava does the sere change, and in this case, it changes to a shava. Now let's look at the second kind of first yod weak verb in Cal imperfect, yarash. Third masculine singular, yirash. Third feminine singular, tirash. Second masculine singular, tirash. Second feminine singular, tirshi. First common singular, irash. Third masculine plural, yirshu. Third feminine plural, tirashna. Second masculine plural, tirshu. Second feminine plural, tirashna. First common plural, nirash. So those are the two kinds of first yod weak verbs. Now halak follows the same pattern that we see with the first yod type one pattern. The hey, the first hey drops out and the prefix takes its place. And for the most part, we have a sere stem vowel, except for when there's a shava involved. Then it becomes a pathak. Again, it follows the same pattern as the first yod type one. 
third masculine singular. Yelech, third feminine singular. Telech, second masculine singular. Telech, second feminine singular. Telchi, first common singular. Elech, third masculine plural. Yelchu, third feminine plural. Telachna, second masculine plural. Telchu, second feminine plural. Telachna, first common plural. Nalach. Not only did we talk about first yods being weak verbs, but we also mentioned first noons. And again, we didn't see an example of this in the Cal perfect, but we do see it in Cal imperfect. So look at nafal. This is to fall. Third masculine singular. Yapol. Third feminine singular. To pole. Second masculine singular. To pole. Second feminine singular. Tipli, first common singular. Epol, third masculine plural. Yiplu, third feminine plural. Tipolna, second masculine plural. Tiplu, second feminine plural. Tipolna, first common plural. Nepol. Now there's another kind. Look at nasa, to depart, third masculine singular. Yasa, third feminine singular. Tasa, second masculine singular. Tasa. Second feminine singular. Tisi, first common singular. Esa, third masculine plural. Yesu, third feminine plural. Tisana, second masculine plural. Tisu, second feminine plural. Tisana, first common plural. Nisa. So you'll note one kind, the first kind, keeps the holum stem vowel that we saw in the cal imperfect strong. But the noon the first noon drops out and is replaced by the imperfect prefix. The noon is assimilated as a dogesh forte in the second letter of the stem. In the second type, the noon drops out, it's assimilated with a dogesh forte in the second letter of the stem, the prefix takes the place, and the stem vowel is a pathak. Now it is possible to have first noon weak verbs that are doubly weak. Look at nachal. Nachal means to obtain or receive property. It is a first noon, but it also has a second guttural. Third masculine singular, yinchal. Third feminine singular, tinchal. Second masculine singular, tinchal. Second feminine singular, tinchali. First common singular, enchal. Third masculine plural, yinchalu. Third feminine plural, tinchalna. Second masculine plural, tinchalu. Second feminine plural, tinchalna. First common plural, ninchal. So what's going on th in this doubly weak verb? Well, the noon would normally assimilate and drop out and become a dogesh forte. However, second gutturals, by virtue of being a guttural, can't take dogesh forte. Forte. So there's no assimilation. So the noon doesn't drop out because we can't assimilate. So that's what's going on there. Now, speaking of doubly weak verbs, there are many. We've got several examples that we can look at. Again, don't worry about memorizing these. Be able to recognize them. That's what's more important. Asa, to do, to make. I'm going to read these off lightning fast. Let's go. Lightning round time. Third masculine singular, ya'ase. Third feminine singular, ta'ase. Second masculine singular, ta'ase. Second feminine singular, ta'asi. First common singular, e'ese. Third masculine plural, ya'asu. Third feminine plural, ta'asana. Second masculine plural, ta'asu. Second feminine plural, ta'asana. First common plural, na'ase. Look at ra'a to do evil. Third masculine singular, uh, yere. Third feminine singular, tere. Second masculine singular, tere. Second feminine singular, tere. First common singular, ere. Third masculine plural, yeru. Third feminine plural, terena. Second masculine plural, teru. Second feminine plural, terena. First common plural, nere. Look at haya, to be. Third masculine singular, ye, yeah, ye. Yeah. 
This looks very familiar, right? Kind of looks like Yahweh. Huh. Maybe that's because they're related words. Third feminine singular. To yeah. Second ma masculine singular. To yeah. Second feminine singular. To ye. First common singular. A uh, yeah. Third masculine plural. Ye you. Third feminine plural. To yenna. Second masculine plural. To you. Second feminine plural. To yenna. First common plural. Ni ye. Look at yatsa. To go. Third masculine singular. Yetse. Third feminine singular. Tetse. Second masculine singular. Tetse. Second feminine singular. Tetsi. First common singular. Etse. Third masculine plural. Yetsu. Third feminine plural. Tetsena. Second masculine plural. Tetsu. Second feminine plural. Tetsena. First common plural. Netse. Look at nasa. Now this is a different verb from the other nasa that we saw before. That one was with a samic, ayin. This is with a seen, olive. Same pronunciation, different verb. Nasa, to bear, to carry. Third masculine singular, yi sa. Third feminine singular, ti sa. Second masculine singular, ti sa. Second feminine singular, ti si. First common singular, esa. Third masculine plural, yi su. Third feminine plural, ti sena. Second masculine plural, ti su. Second feminine plural, ti sena. First common plural, nisa. And then we have nathan, to give. Third masculine singular, yi then. Third feminine singular, ti then. Second masculine singular, ti then. Second feminine singular, ti thni. First common singular, ethen. Third masculine plural, yi thnu. Third feminine plural, ti thena. Second masculine plural, ti thnu. Second feminine plural, Tithena, first common plural, Nithen. So be able to recognize those. Don't worry about memorizing them. You should be able to pick them apart now uh, with all of the other examples that we've seen. And since you've mastered the Cal imperfect strong, you know the features that make up the imperfect. You know them. And you should be able to identify them by knowing your vocabulary and knowing the diagnostics of the imperfect. Lastly, let's look at the state of verb you call to be able. It is highly irregular, so you should really learn this one. Third masculine singular, you call. Third feminine singular, to call. Second masculine singular, to call. Second feminine singular, to chli. First common singular, u call. Third masculine plural, yuchlu. Third feminine plural, tuchalna. Second masculine plural, tuchlu. Second feminine plural, tuchalna. First common plural, nuchal. That's it for today. We have now covered the cal imperfect in total between strong and weak verbs. If you want to keep watching and brush up on your cal strong, you can watch this video here until next time. See you then.